Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Welcome to my shop. It's good to have you back here. Mitch behind the cameras, and we're working on the Cub today. We had a, a leaky oil tank that we tried to fix and we couldn't find where the leak was, so there was a lot of suggestions on how to do it, and it seemed like the best uh, a suggestion was air pressure and soapy water, so that's what we did. Here's the rig. It's a bicycle inner tube. It's on the small side and I made up this piece of aluminum and there's an O-ring and this fits into the top of the oil tank. So it was a two person job because there was nothing to hold this down. So I had my friend Ross here and he was working the, the hand pump and, and we've got one end of the inner tube which is, is blocked off. So I would hold this down and then he would pump it up. This would swell. And then we would look, we had a, some soapy water and a, a brush and there was the bubbles. It was, it was quite amazing how many bubbles came out and the crack was maybe, maybe, maybe this long. I'm gonna show you a couple little, little photos which I took. So there was some discussion of whether we should braze it or TIG weld it, and we decided to go for TIG welding, and I think that was the smart choice, because if it was brazing, there would have been a lot more, more heat over a larger area, and more paint would have been lost. So I did some TIG welding, and then we checked it, and then the crack spread. I TIG weld that, and then the, uh, the crack went over here. So it was a back and forth from on the bench here over to the TIG welding station, but we got it fixed. So that was good. I used a Dremel, and there was a little wheel I had there, a little grinding wheel, and you can see how I, I ground on the bottom there. So that's about how long. And then I started TIG tacking there, and then from, so from here to here, that's how long the crack was. And the crack basically, it came down the seam. And then after that, it kind of spread at the ends. So that's what was involved to fix the oil leak. After the oil leak was fixed, we decided to fire it up. And so we took it outside and that's when the Kickstarter rubber really showed us that it wasn't happy with what was going on. This bike, it, it's got a nine to one piston in it, but it takes a lot to kick it over. I guess maybe the Kickstarter is short, maybe the ratio inside the cases or something, but you really have to put your boot into it to make it turn over. And then it starts fairly easy, but it was running rich. I had a, a 200 main jet in it. That's what was suggested to me. And that was rich, so we went down to 190, 180, 170, and it was still rich. So, and it was also, it was also noisy. So I made up a, an insert which would go into the muffler. It's made out of aluminum, 6061. You can see there's holes. So that's gonna cut down on the noise. Haven't tried it since then. I'll, sh I'll show you the muffler so you know where it goes. So you can see inside the muffler, that's, that's where the baffle goes. And I think it's gonna work quite well. I hammered it in there. I used some, uh, I used some good Loctite. It was a retaining compound of Loctite. It was green. So stay tuned, we'll figure out how the noise level is. I took the carb apart and what I found was that I'm used to swapping out needles and that. Well, this needle, it has no markings on it whatsoever. And in, in talking with a couple people, they basically only make one, one size of needle, I think. It comes down, it's got a taper here at the end. And so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find a needle which is a little larger on the bottom because it, it, it's too rich on the bottom. So I'm, I'm down at a 150 main jet now and the plug kind of looks okay, but I don't get that throttle response right off idle. There's a hesitation there. So not happy with the hesitation. I want it to run properly. 
And then I also worked on the battery mount because there was a lot of, there was a lot of comments actually about my use of a zap strap, a cable tie. So what I did, this was yesterday, I made up, I got some aluminum, 6061, and this is where the battery goes. So I'll just show you what I got now. So this is, that's where the battery fits. And then I made this piece. It's got threaded holes there, five millimeter. And this holds the battery quite, quite well. So I am working on the cub because I want it to be working well. So everything is just so, so see, it doesn't fall. There's nothing on the bottom. Actually, that's the top. So that's going to work quite well. And then I talked about a cover because that was going to be the, the cover that hides the zap straps. So I made, I did some CAD, cardboard aided design. And these holes here, see these two holes on the plate and it also spaces it out. That's where the mount's going to go, something like that there. You can see where the hole lines up. So that's, we're going to make that out of a piece of aluminum today. I've got some 3,003, 80 thick. So that's going to be the project for today. But also what's going on, now that the oil tank is fixed and it's not leaking, there is quite a bit of oil that's coming out of the motor. So we're going to take off the side cover on the right side and we're just going to have a peek inside to see if we can tell where that oil is coming from. All that oil has leaked out of the motor in four days, so that's, that's not acceptable at all, at all. And the oil is coming from the other side. Let's show you that. See right here, that's the oil drip and it leaks right there. So it's coming, see on the cases, it's leaking from between this case and that case. And the oil is supposed to be held in between, well, it's gonna be held at this case. So it's leaking into here. So I've, I've taken off the shifter, the shift lever, I've taken off the kickstarter, I've taken off the foot peg. We're going to take off this case and just have a look inside, see if we can tell where that oil is coming from. It's either going to be out of the transmission, which is this rear part, or the engine, which is the front part. So let's have a look. Okay, it's coming. Oh, okay, look at that. See, see the oil coming out of there? Did you see that? So there was a level of oil in there. There's not supposed to be oil in there. So it's seeping. Seeping and weeping. See that oil there? There's not supposed to be oil in this. So I guess what I can do if I can if I if I clean this off. Maybe we can see where it's coming from, because right now, I'm not sure. It's possible the oil could be leaking out of the shaft here, because that's a shaft in a bronze bushing right here. And there's no seal, but I think the level is supposed to be lower. But maybe it's coming out of there, but it just keeps on, well, if it fills up here, it's, it, it's going to keep on leaking because there's a quarter inch or more oil in the bottom. So anyway, we will figure this out and we'll probably get back to you in a, another episode. What the plan is, is to get the bike running well and then go for a little road ride around here and do some filming. So that's the goal here is to show the bike running nicely. Okay, I'm going to bolt on the battery mount, but what I want to, want to show you here is that I changed the mount on the oil tank. This used to be a solid mount on the bottom, and now it's, it's, it's one of those rubber mounts. So it's, it's actually isolated that because that's where the crack was, right along there. And I thought that 
if it is putting any tension on the on on the oil tank when I I torque it down when I torque the bolt down. So this is solid up top, and this is a see it's a rubber mount. So that's going to isolate this from cracking, hopefully. So we'll see how that works. Got one bolt, one Allen screw that holds this on the top. And now you can see better how the how the rubber mounts work here because last time when we show this, I had one zap strap and the zap strap was moving. So here you go, you can see how it's, it's rubber mounted now. So I like that, that looks good. And then the cover, I did this yesterday, it's just out of cardboard and I, I took welding rod or a, a brazing rod and I reinforced it with masking tape there. So this is gonna look something like that. Something like that. So it's gonna, it's gonna hide all this. And I think it'll look, look okay. So our mission today is to make this out of aluminum. And I wanna show you something else about, about what I did in the past. Years ago, maybe 20 years ago, when I was racing Aramaki's, I used to make belly pans. And it's made out of a piece of metal. And this is my template. So I would, I would trace around here with my red felt pen. I would cut this out on the bandsaw and then I would bend it up. I had a special bending jig for this in the Arbor Press and then it ended up like this. So why I'm telling you that is because I have an idea of what this shape has to look like, but I don't really know until I make it. This, I, I spent maybe, a whole day in in coming up with this shape because I would I would try a shape and then I would bend it up and I go no that's not the right shape and then I would I would make a, a different shape I would modify it a little bit I'd try that again so this is probably shape number four or five to get this right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a pair of, of, of cutters and I'm gonna cut up to here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna bend it out and then I'm gonna have this flat and I'm gonna try and estimate what this shape should should look like. So there's, that's where the hole's gonna go. What's going to happen here is I've got this. This is my bending mandrel. I'll call it that. And I need a, a piece of uh, a flat bar on the other side. And then I hold it in the vise here. And then I, I bend it by hand because it doesn't need a huge amount of force. This is sort of off the cuff. So I've lined it up and then I go back a quarter of a turn like that. And then that's where I start my bend, like about that. So now I need a, a spacer to go from here to the edge so that I get the spacing right when I start the bend. So that's about like that. So what is that? Is that half inch? Just going by the seat of my pants here. Yeah, so that's, that's half inch basically. So if I take a half inch spacer and I put it like that, that's where I start my bend. Yeah, 
that might work. Do you see how I'm doing that? Let's see what happens here. Might have to hammer it a bit. Let's see what happens here. It wants to bend right here and I don't, I don't want it to bend right there. So I'm going to make some noise. Happy with that. See that? That's that's a nice bend. So we've done one. Okay, we got four bends. Now we have to start on forming those, uh, all the corners, because it's got to be a nice radius. Actually, this radius should match that radius there. So let's go see how we do. What's happening here, I've got inch and an eighth. It's a little larger than this corner here. But this has to go inside, so I'm, I'm going to round the end. I'm going to put a nose on it, a nice, a nice radius. This will get held in the vise, and then I can hammer this, this down to that radius. So that way it's consistent between all four corners. So. <laughs> comes together like that and then once I put a, a tig tack right there then it's easier to, to just knock this down and so it closes in okay so that that one corner that's that's good to start with so now we'll do okay this was the easiest one because it's shallow angle this is going to be the hardest one I think we'll do this one next
Okay. I like that corner. Okay, over to the TIG welder now. We'll do some aluminum welding. Haven't done that for a while. I'm welding 3003 aluminum and I was told to use 1100 welding rod, but I don't like how this rod melts. So what I'm using is 6061. It melts a lot nicer, so it's not like it has to hold high pressure gas or anything like that. So I'm gonna go with 6061 and we'll see. Okay, so a little bit more hammering, a little bit more welding, a little bit more hammering, a little bit more welding. Let's see where this takes us. So far, I'm happy. Okay, a bit more welding now. Although my welding is getting better, that's the best one. I need to drill one hole and then we'll see if it fits. That's the true test. Okay. All right. We finished the fight, well, basically finished the, the basic shape and form of the side cover. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it very much. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. We appreciate it. And Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffees, that really helps the flow of this channel as well. Until next time, you take care. Have a great week. Bye.